Hi everyone, welcome to KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be taking a look at some Genesun charge controllers. These are some sample units on loan from Gigaparts. Thanks guys at Gigaparts. And uh, they've got two different kinds. This one is for lithium iron phosphate batteries. This one is for lead acid batteries. They've got 5 amp versions and they've got 10 amp versions. We're going to be looking at the 5 amp versions today. And while I don't own any lead acid batteries, so we're only going to test the lithium iron phosphate battery. I suspect everything's going to be uh, pretty much exactly the same other than just different charging chemistries. So do make sure you're using the right charge controller for whatever kind of battery you have. But uh, other than that, it should be pretty straightforward. I'll leave a link in the description for 5% off any Genesun product from Gigaparts. So if you're into saving money, click that link. So let's hop over to the bench. I'll show you some specs and we'll show you, take a walk around the Genesun charge controller and show you what's what. Then we'll run outside and do some tests. We'll wrap it up. So stay tuned. Now here's an instruction manual that came with the sample testers for me to review. Uh, I can't comment whether this actually comes with the charge controllers when you buy them, but I would imagine it does. First, we've got just some warnings. Don't short circuit things. Don't electrocute yourself. Here we start getting into how to wire these things. They're very, very easy to wire, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But basically, all we're going to do, we have three ports on the charge controller itself. We're going to have uh, the panel input, the battery. So basically, if you follow the signal path, you're going to go from the sun to the solar panel and into this panel input. That in turn goes, uh, there's an, this battery is an output and that's what charges your battery. You can also hook a load up to this, but I generally use the practice of not connecting any loads to my charge controller and I connect them directly to the battery and that's what we're going to be doing today. But you can connect a load to here so long as you do not exceed the 5 amp max uh, load current draw from this. This next page on the instructions is going to tell you about these different uh, charge indicator lights. So you basically have uh, a, gri a guide on here as well and depending on how fast or slow these are blinking is going to tell you uh, how much current and how much charge you're getting out of your solar panel and into your battery. And you have a LED right here that will turn either green, hopefully everything is good, that means you're charging, or red, you have some kinds of errors, whether it's an overheat or an overload, uh, battery voltage too low, battery voltage too high, panel voltage too high, or some kind of internal error. And then here we've got some specs for you nerds out there. Uh, the maximum input voltage 27 volts, recommended max panel voltage 22, minimum battery voltage for normal operation 7.2, trickle charge to recover dead battery, yes, hmm, that's an interesting feature. Minimum input short circuit current 5 amps, continuous rated load current 5 amp, maximum input current 9 amp, and you get about 94 to 99.85% efficiency from the charge controller. As far as operating consumption, uh, gosh, nothing, 0.15 milliamps. Almost free to use. And then on the last page here, we've got some more of the specs, so specifically for lithium iron phosphate. Uh, let's see, we've got float voltage for lead acid or constant voltage for lithium ion, 13.8. Here we're gonna charge up to 14.2 volts for the GV5 lithium ion. 14.2, which is what we're looking at, and uh, all this other stuff that I don't really need to concern myself with. Now let's take a look at how to hook this thing up. So I'm just gonna hook this up temporarily. Uh, I would use better wire than I am right now, but I basically just took some spare parts I have lying around with some Anderson power poles, and I put these terminal connectors on just to make it a little easier to insert into these uh, plug sockets to connect everything. But taking a look at the actual charge control itself, this is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. Just keeping consistent with the channel, let's do a Bofang for scale. Guys, this is right about exactly the size of a Bofang. Height, width, everything. So to give you an idea of how small this charge controller is, well, it's one Bofang exactly. So at any rate, there's not much really to fuss with. This is very, very simple. So I'm gonna attach these here and then we'll run outside and I'll show you the rest and then we will wrap things up. But real quick, 
Uh, everything that's kind of in the manual that's important is written down here, your max uh, voltage, your max input short circuit, your max input current, use only copy conductors, blah, 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 terminal block torque, three to five inch pounds. So yeah, just in case you forget anything. And then here you've got uh, some different charging states and then red LED equals error. So uh, when you're out in the field without the manual, you can still kind of know what you're doing. And it's made in the USA. So everyone likes to support products made in America. That's awesome. Let's see what we have on the back here. So this was manufactured October 15th, 2021. So that's good that they put the date on there and you've got your serial number and uh, some other information here. So let's hook this up and go outside and play in the sun. So very, very simple. We've got a minus and a plus and a plus and a minus. Again, I'm not connecting anything to the load. I'm gonna connect the load directly to the battery. So I'm just going to insert these two terminals in here. We'll tighten these down a little bit with our screwdriver, not too tight. And then second verse, same as the first. And that's it, we're ready to go out in the sun. Now guys, setting up your charge controller is ridiculously easy. We're gonna be using a 60 amp hour foldable solar panel from BioNO going into the Genesun. And I've also got a six amp hour BioNO battery that we're gonna be charging here. So let me show you how to hook it up. And I wanna show you on the 705 that I've got going through some Messi and Poloni Hyperflex 5 up to a uh, 40 meter off center fed dipole on the roof. Show you just how clean the signal output is while, or won't show you because there's nothing gonna be seen. Uh, there's, there's no interference that we get from these coming off uh, of the panel and into the charge controller. So let's show you how to hook this up then we'll take a look at the screen. So very, very simple. We've got first a lead coming from the solar panel that I am going to attach to the charge controller here. Then I'm gonna connect a wire to the battery portion. And I'm just gonna hook this up to an inline watt meter just so we can make sure that we're actually getting some current going into the battery. And I'm gonna use another wire to plug into the BioNO has these barrel connectors, so we've got that. And lastly, we're going to plug the radio into the battery and plug that in. So let's take a look and see if we get any noise on the screen. Now we're right at 7150, right in the middle of the 40 meter band, we're plus or minus 80 kilohertz either side of the center frequency. We're just being powered by the battery right now. But let's go ahead and plug in the charge controller. Now typically the noise you're gonna see from a charge controller is just a splatter of junk. Basically take a, a signal like that and make it, you know, 25, 30, 40 kilohertz wide of just solid red noisy uh, interference. And we are not seeing that from this charge controller. A little later in the afternoon, so we're only getting, oh, about almost an amp out of the solar panel. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see that, but we're right at one amp right now. And we're not seeing any noise being generated by the solar panel. If we were to see noise, it would look like this right here, but we're not seeing all that nasty distortion. Now, let's switch bands here and hop up to 20 meters, say, and we'll screw around. Still 80 kilohertz either side of the center frequency. There, we got an amp coming in. A lot of this noise is just noise that I have at my house because I'm surrounded by power lines. That's not from the charge controller. Let's see, we'll unplug it. Still have the same noise there. That's just my conditions at home, which is why I don't operate at home very often. Uh, looking at an S5 noise level on 20. So, yeah, very, very clean output from this. Let's go a ways away. There's some AM uh, stations there, but no nasty, disgusting RFI that you see from so many of the lesser quality charge controllers. There's just, it's just not there. So you can do your portable activations. You can do uh, some minimal lightweight charging with just, you know, a 60 watt solar panel. Say your power goes out or something, you can charge all your batteries, your USB devices, your iPads, your iPhones, your, 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 you know, your phones, your tablets, things like that, whatever. And there's, you know, the bigger 10 amp version of this, you can get more power uh, into it and out of it. So. Yeah, very pleased with this. Well, what a nice change of pace it is to have a quality charge controller that doesn't output a lot of garbage. All, there's, 
There's no shortage of junk charge controllers on the market. Trust me, I've tried a lot of them with Big Geek and Little Geek. Currently inside Little Geek, there is a small little charge controller from China. It does put out noise, so I'm gonna figure out a way to get this in there. I think it's just small enough to make it fit um, because I don't use Little Geek much for uh, radio when I'm charging because it does produce RFI. So primarily I use uh, Big Geek. But yeah, compact, lightweight. Really, I, the five amp panel, for a lot of you portable ham radio guys, if that's all you're looking to do, is just keep your batteries charged while you're playing radio, the 60 watt Bioeno panel and this, you're probably gonna get three to four amps of current out of that solar panel, and that's gonna probably be enough to keep your battery charged all day, even at 100 watts, uh, banging out the contacts like it's field day, so. If you need more out of your charge controller, they do have a 10 amp version. I'll leave a link for that as well. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very nice to finally get one of these in my hands. I've known about this company for years. They have a great reputation and it certainly did not disappoint. So very big thank you to my friends at Gigaparts for loaning this to me. Unfortunately, it's gotta go back in the mail so someone else can play with it. But uh, I do see myself picking one of these up in the very near future and putting it in Little Geek. So Little Geek can be happier. Anyway, guys, thanks so much. If you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button, like it, share it, do all that kind of good stuff. And until next time, we'll see you again on another episode of K&MRD Radio Stuff 73, guys.